Annette Green here with Elizabeth Craft Designs and some new planner dies that we are using not for planners at all but to make cute little journals and books. I'm going to show you three different ways from easy to medium and to a little more advanced on some books that you can make yourself that would be great little stocking stuffers for Christmas or even any time of the year as little gifts. So let's get right to it. So what we're working with today are some new dies the general file folder set number one and number two and that's to get that great file folder shape of course and then there's a lot of little accent pieces in here which are great uh, but what you need to know if you're going to use reminiscence the book number five like i did which is new it's amazing it's beautiful on this particular project as you can see here uh, you just have to know that this paper in the book measures seven and a half inches by ten so when you go to grab one of those file folders you can see just laying on the front of the book that you can't do it this way so um, in a couple of examples I will show you here's the one that I did use there's certain papers in here that are going to work just fine if you turn it sideways a lot of these words on this page are going sideways anyway so this one was great for that now, on the other hand, I'm going to show you this one, which I really wanted this flower to be up here. So I came up with a solution for that one, and I'll show you that in just a minute. But just keep that in mind. Okay, so we're going to do just a very simple, basic, uh, single insert notebook. And it's going to have a simple pamphlet stitch, a three-hole pamphlet stitch, and I'm going to show you how super easy that is. But as you can see, I have die cut this out from set number one. And I have used the thicker of the two different weights of cardstock that are in that paper collection. Okay, so there's my cover. And then I'm going to just fill it with some plain, uh, like, resume paper. A little bit nicer than copier paper. This has a little creaminess to it. Uh, I just want to put in some filler pages so this person, whoever receives this, can just use it as a notebook however they want to. Now, just in case you feel like, oh, I want to make all the pages with the tab over there. Uh, you can't really do that, and here's why. Because when you get it in there, as you can see, it's sticking out because of the bulk that you have in some of your pages once you stack them all up and get them in there. So you have to have something just a little shorter. And we don't want to cut over on this edge, of course. That's our folded edge where we're going to stitch through. So what we're going to do, I'm going to do, you can decide whether you don't mind that or not, but I am going to cut this off and I'm going to trim this down just a little bit so everything's flush. So honestly, if I were to instruct you to make your own, I would say let's grab however many sheets you want and let's cut these to five and a quarter. And this part won't matter a whole bunch. We can leave it uh, at the eight and a half like it is, but I think I'll cut these five and a quarter tall so they're all the same. And I like to use my quilting ruler. This is like a six by 12 size uh, because it's clear. It has a lot of lines. I can line everything up and see right through it. So I have a stack of, I'm gonna guess about six sheets under here, maybe more. Brand new blade in the cutting, in the knife, the craft knife. And as I always say, I'm on a cutting mat and I am doing several light to medium passes rather than one really hard pass. You don't want to do it that, quite that way. So that's five and a quarter and we'll do that with this stack is where well. I would grab my good old, it's a crocodile corner chomper by We Are Memory Keepers, the same folks as crocodile, of course. And I'm going to keep it folded and the reason why I like to use this is because I know it can chomp through like a whole bunch of layers. So we're going to try going through all of this, see what happens. Not bad, but I'll tell you what, I'm going to close that or open it and do that again. It can be done. It just makes it a little rough if you try to do too many layers at one time. So I'm going to just go for it with all those layers. Let's see what happens. Yeah, that's hard. Oh, but it did it. It did it. And as you can see, when I put it in here and I close it, nothing's hanging out. It looks nice and neat. It's, you know, about an eighth of an inch away 
from sticking out. So that's great. I'm going to fold these in half. Just like before. And the reason why we fold it first and cut it is because if you fold each one independently, let's say you took each sheet and you just folded it and folded each sheet and then you stack them all up, then it's going to fan out again when you fold it closed. So you always want to get your stack. And remember this is three and three quarters. Keep it nice and square. And then this was the five and a quarter. Let's just check that. Yeah, I had already cut these, remember? All right, so that's good. So I'm gonna round these corners again, just like I did, and get these all together. All right, again, I am finding out some things to teach to you, and that is you can't just pre-cut your five and then pre-cut five more. You have to do it in a stack. So what I did is I put them all together again, and those additional five were sticking out. So I put them all together, laid them down, retrimmed to the three and three quarter, just those pieces that were hanging out, and then I had to re-round the corners. And now everything's good. I have 10 total pages stacked, which is now 20 sheets of basically a notebook. All right, now I, I could stop there and stitch it right in. And that's what I wanna show you next, but because I wanna add some strength to my cover and a ribbon closure, we're gonna do that first. But I will show you on one I finished over here that was super duper easy. Uh, very thin. I don't even think this one has 20. I think it may have a dozen pages. Uh, this is how it looks if you do nothing more and you just stop and it's pretty. So the stitching step I will show you in just a little bit is what I've done here. I used a blue, uh, very strong thread. This is uh, like a craft thread by Coates. You can use embroidery floss, uh, wax twine if it's thin enough. Uh, but, I mean, basically that's it. That's a cute little notebook. I used some tan paper in this one, but same steps. So we'll get to the binding part in just a minute. Let me just show you if you wanted to reinforce your cover and add some ribbon. So what I have done is I've selected, as pretty as this side is, I think I want to use this side. Uh, and of course this will be my cover. So I want to line it with this. And so I've die cut it, of course, on the flip side so that I have it going this way this time. And I do have to cut away the center. And I can't just cut down the middle because that's not going to be enough. You have to cut just a little bit more than where that fold is. And it will make sense when you do it. So I've cut just to the left. I don't know if you can see it there of that score. And now I'm going to cut away just a little bit to the right of that score line. And I will check it. By the time we get our pages stitched in here and everything, you won't see if there's a tiny little gap at the inner spine, but that is what we want. Now you could also reinforce it there because we are going to stitch through all this and now you're only stitching through one um, thickness of cardstock to hold all these pages that are going to get flipped and turned. You can do a number of things. You could put some washi tape in here to reinforce it. You could use packing tape in here to reinforce it. I think that's what I'm going to do. You could use gaffer's tape, which is very sticky masking tape. You can decide what you want to do there. But I have chosen this ribbon, so I'm going to run that underneath here. And I'm not going to go right across because I don't want it in the spine area. So I'm just going to figure out where it goes, trim it in half, and then glue that with some fabric glue or something very strong, and then glue these right over the top so we have these tails sticking out to tie together. And if you're really sharp, you saw that I forgot to get that uh, packing tape under there first. So I have cut some of the same paper just from the scrap. And I'm going to patch in a little reinforced spine. No big deal. <laughs> wow. To 
today's one of those days just one of those days so you just have to make sure that you don't cut your little scrap to the same height as your book because you know this dips in right here so this is only like four and three quarters tall and this measure doesn't matter a whole lot but it is roughly an inch and a half fold it in half I'll set this aside and my idea is on my pages on the inside to do a little bit of stamping and so I have pulled out the Elizabeth Crafts um, the gratitude stamp set which also has a matching die purchased separately of course and then kindness I think I might use and blossom so they're all like outline beautiful botanical kind of florals and I've been testing out some inks which I recommend on a scrap sheet of the same paper I'm about to stamp on uh, I just want to have a very light backgroundy effect so for example I am going to grab I'm not going to do the same exact thing on every page so I'll keep those pages in order over there and I'll just do every couple of pages with the roses and then I'll change and some pages might not have anything or might have something even smaller my pages are all stamped and you do need to give oxides a little bit extra time to dry because they are a little painty so I did have those set aside for a little while just so you know and now we're ready to get these pages into our pretty little cover and so I like to make a little template for myself so this is just you know a random piece of paper just any kind of paper it doesn't even matter on this width at all your height just needs to be the height of your papers okay and so I have measured down the same distance from the top to wherever this is so let's say that's one inch and then up from the bottom the same measure one inch and then right in the middle another hole so you can see I have drawn those lines and made some dots this is your basic three hole pamphlet stitch and so what I want to do rather than going through all that stuff all those pages and my covers I'm gonna lay this down on my cover now you can do this by punching right through your template or I like to fold it away from what I've written and I lay it right in there next to my inner spine and I can either just go for it and punch which I think I'm going to do or I could make a pencil line and pull this away and do it but I'm just going to do it and I'm using a piercing tool you can use an awl something like this uh, you just don't want to make a very big hole I have learned okay so now that we have those done we will do the same for the pages and really you don't have to hold them all together just get the one in there and then you can stack it back in place my template is the same height as my papers and make a hole now I'm working on a piercing pad underneath here I don't know if you see that that black pad is just for this purpose okay now make sure I'm all the way through okay great now we will stitch now what I like to do is put some clips here and there just to kind of hold my pages from shifting all around while I do my sewing and just like my simple little one I did before I used a blue thread I'm going to use the same brand of thread uh, this is that craft thread but I'm going to use a brown on this one and it's going to match nicely with my covers and I'm using a fairly fat needle with a very big eye in it just so I don't have to struggle so I'm going to begin by going through the center hole of my pages leave myself a little bit of a tail there now you can put a clip on there or you can put a light piece of tape if you are nervous you're going to pull that through by mistake uh, but I'm not too worried about it and I'm going to go through my cover in the center as well this is when you'll want to stack it on it okay and then this part is a little bit tricky because 
you might not be lined up with your page holes. So I like to get just get into the cover and then peek through to the stack of papers. And of course my angle is not great with the camera here. Okay. So we're going to come up through the bottom hole. And so we have come through and I'm going to jump all the way up to the top here. Trying to see if I can do it in one fell swoop, as they say. Let's see. Yep. Okay, and don't forget, we have that middle tail. We want to kind of push that out of the way. And now we're going to come back in that center hole. Okay, got my thread doubled up here. Okay, and as you can see, if you can see, I'm on the same side of that. See how my two threads over here are coming out on the left side of the center? So I want to pass this underneath so that I'm, on, I'm straddling both sides of that center piece. And this is nice and tight. And now I'm going to get rid of my needle and some of this extra. And I'm just going to tie this in, in a nice square knot. Okay. Square knot simply over and under one way and then under and over the next way. Okay, and then you have these little tails that you can trim as short as, or as long as you want. And that's basically it. Okay, another quick look at my journal. These are my little pages that were stamped very faintly. It is dried beautifully to just what I wanted. Just a subtle little decoration on the right hand pages. And my cover is done. I've done a little bit of decorating. I did add some bookbinders tape. It's a very strong masking tape to this left side. And then to balance out the black, I put on a little tab from the die cut set over there that we've been using general file folder one and then I didn't want all that black there so I'm going to adhere this little ruler strip right here okay and that is uh, the very simple three hole pamphlet stitch version of a very simple cute little notebook would be great for gifts keep in mind you can pull out your other stamps and different papers you can even mix and match papers and colors inside and make simple little journals as well uh, if you want to stick around, I am now going to go into a little bit more detail and show you how to make two more different books. One will be making your own traveler's journal, a little bit uh, custom sized from what we're used to. And then I'm going to show you another one where we're going to do a little fancy stitch to get all these signatures together. All right, and we're going to flow through these uh, a little quicker. Sometimes there are occasions where the already made travelers notebooks and journals that Elizabeth Crafts carries uh, may not be just the right size for what you want. So uh, you can make your own very easily. Uh, of course, there's like faux leather kind of products out there. Um, things like that that you can use that are very durable for book covers. But I'm going to use Craftex, and a lot of us have heard of Craftex. It's this strange paper fabric combination, and it doesn't tear, but it's flexible and it's washable and it's sewable. This is a piece of black, and it's not the pre washed kind, but I could wash it. Uh, you can buy it uh, pre washed already, like this one. And it comes in all different colors, and once it's washed, it has this nice texture to it. So that's what I'm going to use today. I've already done one in black to show you that I punched through it and put eyelets in there and added some paper and everything. So let's do one of those real quick. Knowing that these are going to be my little signatures here. I used a little parchment paper for the inside of these this time. And all the paper that you're seeing from here forward is going to be 49 and mark it. Um, I will list that below as far as what exact collection that is. But to accommodate the file folder die, if you want to include that in your journal, the size of your base or your cover, whether it's leather or uh, this craft text like I'm using, is nine and a quarter inches wide by six inches tall. I have already adhered some fabric 
to mine. You can do paper or whatever you want. And I am going to go on the machine and stitch around the edge just like I did on this one, even though it was paper. I stitched right through here. So I'm going to do that. But before I do that, I wanted to show you that I have made some marks. Okay, there's one in the center, top to bottom, right there. And then there's three here, and then the three down here that line up with those. Okay, so the one is in the center, of course, and then the two are evenly spaced uh, a quarter of an inch apart from each other. And what I'm going to do there is I'm going to take my crocodile in the small hole, and I'm going to and I have the stopper set at like five sixteenths, and I'm just going to first I'll do my center hole. See how nicely that punches, super easy. And because I have the stopper, I don't have to worry. I'm not going to be in line. I am going to be in line. Okay, so there's those three. I'll do those top three. And that middle one, I'm going to have to use my big bite crocodile to reach to that one. All right, and so I have stitched very closely around the edge. And I also, to give it a little distressed look, I pulled at the outer threads on the edges to make it look a little bit more earthy and distressed looking. So that's how it looks. And I went ahead and set my eyelets, three at the top, three at the bottom. And you see this is larger in the center. That just depends on your uh, elastic, which we'll talk about now. Two things though to keep in mind if you're going to do fabric is I did iron the fabric onto some interfacing first, just some middle weight, and that gave it a little more body to glue it down then with some Fabri-Tac. And I did not go all the way out to the edges where I was going to sew. And um, I let this dry completely before I ever went to the sewing machine, just in case. Okay, so elastic. This one is black elastic, as you can see. And the center hole on this one is not filled yet. That is where I'm going to put another elastic loop that will come around the album and keep it closed. But to achieve what we did there, basically, uh, let's see. We're going to use some elastic. There's all kinds of different ones. Uh, Two, two millimeter is a little thick for me, I think, but uh, a lot of these things I do get from Mandala or Mandala Crafts on Amazon. Probably can find it just about anywhere. This is one millimeter, which is what I used in the black one I just showed you. So I think that's going to be better. And I do have this sort of off-white one that I'm going to use for this particular album. And so I would say maybe Maybe about a yard of this is what you'd need. It's probably going to be way too much. But I'm going to cut a yard and I'll show you how easy this is to do. So we're going to flip it to the inside. And by the way, I did adhere some paper also with Fabri-Tac to the inside to cover up my stitches. Uh, that gives this a whole lot more body as well. This is pretty thick uh, 49 and market papers and when I glued that down I did go all the way out to the edges with my Fabri-Tac and I burnished it really well with a bone folder and let it dry It's probably good and dry by now. Okay, we'll start from the top center hole Leave ourselves a little bit of a tail in here because we are going to tie this together when we get finished Okay, then we'll move over and come back in the left hole. And straight down to the bottom left hole. This couldn't be simpler. It's just, you know, dealing with this long piece of elastic, which, like I said, I'm quite sure I have way too much here. But it's better to have too much than not enough and find out after you're all done. All right, now I'm coming back up through the middle. And I'm going to pull this one over and sneak right past it with the same hole in the center. All right, and I'm through there. And now we will come over one, this last hole on the top right. Bottom right, and at this point, I'm just kind of making sure everybody's snug, scooching this over, and I'm going to help it through just like before. You can use a tweezer, 
This is like a filing sanding tool, so it has a little grippy tip to it, which is kind of nice. Okay. Okay, and now we have ended up with these two tails. And we just have to tie those together. So just make sure everybody's kind of snug. It looks a little loose to me, so I'm just going to give it all a pull here. I'm going to do a square knot like we did before, just to make sure. It's hard because it's elastic and it wants to pull back on you, but you want to keep it as taut as you can. Okay, there we go. All right, and then you can trim this away as short as you want, really. And you can put a little uh, strong glue on that knot if you're worried about it. But basically, you've got a double center and then two single ones on the outside. And this is how it looks on the exterior. Kind of nice. And now we just have to add that right. one. And then I did change out my elastic to a thicker one for this part of it. Th these are the, still the same. Uh, I just felt like that hole was way too big for the knot and it was going to pop through no matter how many thicknesses of the knot that I made. So now I'm just going to put in my signatures and you notice I did not staple them together or stitch them in any way prior. I think they're going to be fine just like this, but if you want to, you certainly could. Uh, when I put it through the center one, I'm going to make sure it's the one that doesn't have the knot. So it looks nice and clean on the inside. And then our very first one will go here. And it's as simple as that. Really, really cute. Uh, the craft text is very pliable and soft, so it does want to buckle up there even after I restrung it and loosened it a little bit. So that doesn't bother me too much. It's just something to keep in mind. You can always reinforce that and make this a little bit stronger with another layer of the craft text if you like. But this one is done. I'm going to decorate the cover in a little bit. Uh, but that's how simple that is. For the more involved book, we're going to make a hard cover book. And we're going to stitch our signatures together and put it in there and we're going to cover it. So basically I have one, two, three, four, five, six signatures and within each I have put just some plain, it's like sketch paper but really thin. And there's one, two, three, four, so eight basic pages within each signature. Okay, so it's nice and thick. And this is 49 in market, but the papers that I'm going to use for the covers come from the book five, like we were using before. Okay, so we're going to start off with some basic chipboard. This is just medium weight chipboard, nothing special or fancy. I made two covers the same size, of course, four and five eighths wide by five and three quarters, and then a one and one quarter inch spine width here. And I join them together with that same gaffer's tape. It's really strong masking tape. You can use anything. You could use cardstock here. I just know that this is flexible and it's not going to tear over time. So I put that so that it overlapped a little bit to my covers. And I folded the excess to the inside and gave it a little burnish. And you can see I have that little bit of gap between my covers and my spine just so this doesn't resist. Okay, and so your papers have to be the same size as your covers. So these I plan to put on the inside to be pretty. And then these I plan to be on the outside. So I'm going to get those on there and round the corners just on the outside front cover. Now I can decide right now, do I want to cover the whole front or do I want to see some of that black? And I think I do want to see some of that black, which means I will go in here and trim off some excess. So let me do that and we'll see how that looks. Okay, looks pretty good. I like that little bit of black showing and it looks very neat. So um, now we need to figure out how to bind everything inside and then at the very end we'll put the papers, the end papers on there. So as you saw, I have all my signatures here and I have some pre-punched holes. I think you can see that. Now I could just do like a Copic Coptic stitch and not have any covers, but it just really tears up the paper. I did try, I was going to do that, and I just decided I did not like the way that looked, and I need more practice. 
So I have pre-punched my holes. I have five holes in each. I had made a little template like I had done earlier, but this one had five. So I did that to all the signatures. And then I have to make a little, like a stitching template to stitch all of these into the book. Now, the plan here is to have black cardstock here so that when we go to glue our papers after sewing in our signatures, that we are going to see a little bit of that. You could do a pretty fabric or something, but I'm just going to do black cardstock. So for now, this measures three inches wide by the height of our book, which is the five and three quarter inches. Okay, and then I made a little stitching template. Now, if you look closely, and I'm going to put a T up here just so I keep this at the top. The height of this piece of paper is the height of the paper inside of the signatures because we have this inside rounded corner we can't go all the way to the bottom i think that will look weird so this measures four and three quarter inches tall by one and a quarter which is the width of our spine okay it's just a piece of paper and then i made uh, the same positioning of holes as my little template here and I did it six times because I have six signatures. Okay. And I'm going to punch through all those, but first I want to get this right smack in the middle of my black cardstock. So I'm just going to glue that in with glue stick real quick. It's right smack in the middle, about a half of an inch top and bottom, and equal spacing on both sides. And then I went and I punched through each one of those holes, as you can see here. Okay. And we are going to stitch our signatures with this paper on the bottom so we don't see that when it's in our book later. Okay, so first thing we will do is we will get some thread on a needle and I'm using that same crafty thread I've been using. This time I'm going to use like a off-white color and I got a very nice long piece and it, I don't think it matters if you start from the beginning or the end. I am going to start with the last signature and I'm going to come up through the back of my little template and then come through the very first hole in the top of my last signature. Coming all the way through the covers and the paper. There we go. Okay, so we'll pull this nice and tight. It's a little awkward when you first start. And I do have a knot there. I think I want to make that knot a little bit bigger just so that doesn't want to pop out and pull that right up to there. Okay, and then I'm going to, whoops, pick up the whole schmear, get the whole thing, make sure everything's nice and tight, and then go down through the next hole. Now you have to do a little peekaboo action here and look for your next hole in the black come down okay now we're going to come back in the back come through the signature okay and technically you really should have an even number of holes when you do this but I am going to, I'm going to jump back to the hole that I was in before. Take your time. Okay, just so we have this nice running stitch on the inside, we don't have gaps. All right, now I'm going to jump down to the next hole, way down here, and come through okay you're getting the idea now I can come back I think I will I'll come back through here go back through that hole you know it's like a what is that called a running stitch when you do that okay coming up through the black I know I'm flipping this around a lot, but it's so I can see what I'm doing here. And then come up through that signature hole. Okay. 
So as you can see, I keep pulling it tight. I'm going to go back in that last hole. Not last, but the remaining hole. Okay. And so I am sewn in. I got a little loop there, that first one. That's okay. And so I like to go ahead and tie this off now into a knot. Okay, so we'll do a knot there and cut that. And then, and honestly, don't even need to cut it. But I am going to start over at the top just like we just did. And I'm going to get all my other five signatures sewn into this base. Okay, and I'm on my last one. It definitely gets easier, I have to say. You get the hang of it, you get comfortable. But I will do this last one with you, just to kind of show you again. All right, now all we have to do is get this into our book spine. So I am just going to use the Fabri-Tac. I don't think it matters much. I was going to use three in one, which I think is probably about the same thing, but it is kind of dry. So I'm just going to put a generous amount of this all on the back of here. Definitely want to hit all those knots and strings. And then I will also get these sides. You could probably use some double-sided adhesive. I just know that this is not going to go anywhere over a long period of time, which is what I always want to make sure of when I make a book. So just take your time and get a lot of coverage on here with the strongest adhesive that you know. Okay. All right, so make sure we got it right side up. And this measures exactly the inside of our spine, so we just have to, I have to duck down here and take a peek and make sure I get that in there properly. This is another reason why a liquid glue is a good plan because you can slide it into place. If it's a little bit off, you can take your time and just move that a little bit. So I am just, see I'm sliding out of place there. Make sure and burnish everything down. Really take your time and press it. I'm gonna get in there with a bone folder in those hard to reach places and just take my time and really burnish all that down really, really well. And once that feels like it's pretty dry, you wanna get in there with a bone folder and gently get that crease and I see my glue is coming up here a little bit but get that crease kind of scored okay and now we are ready to put our pretty end papers on to cover up that and you can decide now if you want to round your corners I'm going to because I know that I'm using the same corner rounder that I was earlier so I'm just going to do that and re-ink those rounded corners real quick give it a check to make sure it all fits and doesn't get into that fold area if it does I need to trim a little bit off but it looks like it's just going to clear that we don't want it to to dent in there at all so I may shave off about a sixteenth of an inch off of there and that other side okay and that is it finished off I put the word journal on there with that label and I just love how this turned out it's a nice sturdy wonderful book with all these beautiful pages and those uh, 
file folders to head off each one of my signatures. Uh, just so happy with that. This is a very nice, sturdy hardcover book. Would make a great gift. So there we have all of our little goodies that we've made today. It was a big, long video, so thank you if you stuck with me all the way. I hope you'll give one of these a try, or maybe several. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you soon in the next video.